Hello again, YouTubers. This is GGJ Fly Guy, uh, bringing you my HPI Sprint 2 Flux. When I originally purchased this HPI Sprint 2 Flux, uh, I purchased it with the Camaro uh, body on it. Um, added some lights to it so I could actually run it around at night. Um, decided to change it because I wanted to get into some club racing. Um, so I changed the body out and added this uh, uh, Nissan 350Z body. Uh, one of the things I noticed right off um, with this body is the wing. Um, that's an extremely large wing, and it, as you can tell, um, it, it's it's pretty fair size. But uh, with with that came a little more stability on the back end. Uh, it just seemed to stabilize the back end. Uh, cornering at the track is a lot easier now without you know the back end of it sliding around. Um, I have it sitting on some uh, some. Uh, HPI belted slicks, uh, 3mm offsets on the front, and then 6mm offsets on the rear, um, if you can see those. Um, pretty nice color scheme, came out a little bit better than I thought. Of course, it's beat up now, uh, a few war wounds from being at the track. Uh, but it actually came out a lot better than I thought it would. Um, it was initially put together uh, just for racing. When I finished it up, uh, because it came out so well, I took a few pictures of it just to kind of preserve it. Uh, because I may actually do another body in the same paint scheme to add to my uh, show body collection. Uh, which I'll be putting together a video with uh, my show bodies on this actual chassis. I've done quite a few of them here uh, the past few weeks and months. Um, so probably this weekend I'll, you know, uh, sit down and put the bodies on and different wheels and tires that I have for them. And, Put together a video of each one of them um, and combine it into one video and post it on my YouTube channel. Anyway, check it out. Um, what I'll do in a few minutes is I'll pause this um, and take the shell off, the body off, uh, so you can see some of the changes that I've made to it, some of the uh, fixes uh, from issues that I've had with it, um, and, and it's actually a pretty nice uh, car. Um, it's not original anymore. Um, I've had to change out a few part, parts on it, but I'll, I'll cover those when I take the body off. We'll be back in a few minutes. Here it is. Okay, YouTube, here we're back with the HPI Sprint 2. Um, I've taken the body off. Um, let me go through a couple of the changes that I've made to it. As you can see, um, I no longer have the uh, original cast, the original uh, HPI flux motor. Um, that died on me. Um, I'm not sure if it was the motor or the ESC. Uh, I just lost power during a race one day and it just kind of died on me. Um, I've since changed it to a castle. Uh, 1406 uh, 4600 kV motor which seems to be uh, quite a bit of power um, I kept the original gearing um, I still have the the original uh, 92 spur gear and actually I did make a small change um, I went up two teeth on the uh, the pinion gear down there if you can see it um, I went up to a, a 27 tooth pinion also um, didn't lose a lot of uh, top speed uh, or acceleration just kind of made it just a little bit quicker um, for me. Um, also, uh, changed out the speed controller. Now I'm running a Castle Sidewinder 3 uh, ESC now. Um, one of the things about the original Sprint 2 in its original form is it didn't come with a on-off switch once you connected the battery. You were actually, if you didn't have the radio on, you were actually powered up uh, with this new setup I, that I have. I, I've actually added a on-off switch up here to the top if you can see that. Um, which for me is just better. I, I like being able to turn it on and off. Um, so that's uh, the new uh, motor and ESC setup that I, that I put on it. Kind of tighten up the wires a little bit if you can see I've added some uh, straps to kind of keep the wires close together and, and out of the way. Um, it also allows me to run smaller bodies on it. Um, or lower profile bodies on it uh, without without them bulging up uh, or wires hanging out from under the bottom which was one of the issues that the uh, Sprint 2 had was the wires were just entirely too long um, especially the uh, wires for the for the ESC to connect to the battery um, with that said I did also um, let's turn it around here so you can see this 
I actually shortened the uh, battery uh, compartment by moving this in these this this piece in some um, to shorten it and then on the back side I just took some I took some uh, foam spacers and some uh, two-sided sticky tape to kind of cushion this back in because the batteries do tend to slide back and forth and I'm using a, a soft pack battery so I didn't want them really kind of rubbing around in there sliding around um, so that's one of the changes that I made. Um, I also removed the uh, the uh, antenna post. I uh, didn't really want that sticking through the body. I uh, really just kind of don't like see even seeing it. And it really is not necessary. Um, if you're running a 2.4 gigahertz system, you really don't need the antenna sticking outside the body. Um, a good setup, a good system, will, you can uh, not, you don't really need to have that. But you just need to leave that end piece exposed and it'll pick up the signal pretty well. I mean, I still get the same distance. Of course, I use it at the track, so distance for me is not a real big issue. Um, other than that, uh, again, she's sitting on the HPI uh, belted uh, slick racing tires, which are really good compound. Um, they're kind of they're soft. It's it's a real soft rubber. Um, they're kind of dirty right now, um, but once you wash them down or wipe them down with some dishwashing uh, detergent. They they stick actually grip really well, um, and we run on asphalt um, and uh, concrete at the track that I the club that I, I race at, and it seems to handle a, a lot better with these these particular tires on it. Of course, we'll get a chance to check them out. One other issue that I had, and I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this, I'll try to point to it. Uh, there's a lot of play in the front end of these the HPIs. They're, they're known for a lot of play. Um, one of the problems with that is the servo saver down here if you can see that um, this actual screw right here it seems to back down and create a lot of slop in the front end especially if you're cornering and turning a lot you know as you would on a track uh, and if you can see that I'm not sure if you can or not um, I managed to, to fix it by one running the, the servo uh, screw all the way up as far as I could get it to go disconnecting the screw under the bottom of it and placing about six really thin shim type washers under it and then screwing it back in. I mean I actually Loctited the screw so it wouldn't come out also and it seemed to work. Now it didn't take all of the slop out of the front end. Um, there's still some play in it but uh, not from driving or not when you're driving it. Um, it actually handles a lot better. Um, I took it out for practice this past weekend, this past Sunday and it actually uh, ran um, I actually got some really good lap times in with it, uh, not having to worry about it shaking in the front end. Um, it had gotten to be where when that backs down, it's really bad. The, the steering is really awful. You can barely control it. Now it uh, it runs like a champ. Anyway, this is the HPI Sprint 2. Um, and a few of the changes that I made is actually, to me, it's actually a pretty decent car. Uh, not really sure on that motor and the ESC problem that I had. I don't know if that was a manufacturer defect or if it was one or the other. Um, I tossed the ESC away. I kept the motor because I have a feeling it may have been the ESC. I still have to check it out. I may connect it to this, actually connect it to this ESC one day and, and just check it. Um, either way, this castle seems to run pretty pretty well. Um, it actually will push it. Plus, I can I can legitimately put a 3S LiPo on this, this uh, castle motor and run it up to speed. Um, I've managed to only have to change the belt once, and that's because I'm... Again, I uh, didn't keep the uh, the uh, belt tensioner tight. Uh, some debris got up in there, and then one of the wires from the old motor got caught up in there also, and it kind of chewed the belt up. Um, as far as speed, uh, I ran out of 3S with the old motor. One time, I managed to get it up to about 60, right at 60 miles an hour, 59 miles an hour. Um, kind of at that speed, a car this light, not really comfortable with it, um, so I uh, put, I haven't run a 3S in it since then. I may attempt to do it one more time with this uh, Newcastle motor just to see how it does, um, but it pretty much uh, club racing for this one and, and, and hitting the track. Um, again, I'm uh, planning on building an A scale for that, uh, for speed runs and everything. Anyway, this is the HPI. Hope you like it. Um, later in the week, again, I'll, I'll put together I uh, put the bodies on that I've done and, and uh, put it together and put it out there, uh, video together out there for you guys to check out.
Let me know what you think. GGJ Fly Guy signing off.